Greetings, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of It's All About the Fuzz. Alongside <laughs> my co-host, as always, Miss Karen La Preziosa. What's going Good on? Good morning, Karen? everybody. Hope everybody's doing well Good here. Morning. It's it's the weekend, thankfully. Mm-hmm. Karen and I were just bitching off camera about week stuff leading up to this and it's like really yeah. happy. it's saturday and we're happy to be talking about cool music and absolutely yeah and as we it's have respite from yes the other bullshit you know yes. that comes with the week so i look forward to this yeah talking about music talking about metal is always cathartic and just always helps out and uh as we said uh back when we first started this this series the show that we were going to quite frequently take dips into some of these very cool record labels that are homes to lots of fuzz laden bands, whether they be doom or heavy psych or stoner or what have you, there's a lot of them. And our first episode in doing so, we're going to talk about rise above records, which is one of the oldest, I think of the ones that we will talk about. So they've been around since 1988, of course, started up by Lee Dorian who, of course, the lead singer for many, many years of Cathedral and got his start in Napalm Death. And he is a big fan of, obviously, Doom, Stoner, heavy psych music. So uh, he started it off. It's a a London-based independent record labels. He's got, there's two parts to Rise Above. There's Rise Above Records, which is dedicated towards all the newer current bands. And then what arguably is even cooler is he's got Rise Above Relics, Yes. where when he finds these kind of cool nuggets from the vaults of these bands that nobody's ever heard of who were playing like heavy music back in the late 60s and 70s and I yeah. never really stuff on on that division too often but when they come out I generally scoop those up and there's lots of other, there's lots of cool stuff there we're not going to talk about the relics today but right. we may revisit that again at some point down the road because there's some really cool bands that kind of are you know garage kind of yeah you know, all sorts of cool head early heavy stuff and yeah. really, really underground lo-fi doomy all sorts of stuff so but we'll we'll get into that later so uh for today we've each picked out five bands from rise above that we're going to talk about a little bit and uh, we urge everybody watching to go investigate these groups uh what karen and i decided to do is you know pick a couple that we're familiar with maybe a couple that we're not so familiar with or whatever or you know have minimal uh um, interaction with as far as listening and buying previously uh i'm gonna let karen talk also briefly about a couple of bands that are like the high profile acts on the label there's like five or six really yeah that (laughs) We, we talk about a lot. Well, I will just gloss over it. Yeah, so we decided not to talk about the, to them today. And like one specifically, uh, we're going to be doing a rank in the album show of in the not too distant future because they just came out with a brand new album. So I'll, I'll turn it over to Karen for a couple of minutes to kind of gloss over some of these other major bands that we're not going to talk about today. Yeah, because each one of these bands is a show on its own. Um, we're going to talk about what we're who we're not talking about is Electric Wizard, um, Cathedral ghost uh what else who else pete come on there uh I'll church, of you... Mis- church of misery church of misery and then there's another one uh hold on let's see sleep we could because rise of a, a rise above yeah they did a little bit with sleep um god there's so many there's church of misery uh, uncle acid and the deadbeats Boom, who is really the main right now uh the big the big act on um rise above i also want to say that lee dorian is my hero um he started rise above uh because he wanted to get off the dole as they say in england I, there was a a program that margaret thatcher started uh and it was a way to get unemployed people into to be employed and in their own business like it was promoting entre- entrepreneurship so i think the requirements was you needed a thousand pounds to start and um, a business plan. And then you got uh, a paycheck from the government, I think of like 40 or 50 pounds, I'm not sure, a week uh, to help start your business. Um, And he started Rise Above and it has turned into a major thing. And I love it. I love that he did it. And not only that, he he named it Rise Above uh, because after 
Black Flag song, which is my favorite Black Flag songs and one of my favorite songs ever. And uh, Lee Dorian is, uh, he could be singing Doom or whatever right now, but he's always a punk. And I think that shows and just this ethic that he did, it's DIY. I heard a few, listened to a few interviews about with him about it. And, uh, you know, specifically about Ghost because he released Ghost's first record. And um, he just said that Rise Above was not big enough to handle Ghost and where they wanted to go. And that they've always been more about backing the artists and the releases. It was more quality than quantity that they just don't release anything just to get money and generate income. So I thought that was really cool. And if I were to do a record label, it would be <laughs> above in that, that philosophy. So yeah, Electric Wizard, these are classic records that my favorite Electric Wizard come my fanatics, you know, it's, it's just great. Now my okay. favorite band. <laughs> you make a great point about the fact that they don't just release all sorts of stuff and yeah. they have limited budgets and things. So sometimes these young bands get their start on Rise Above and then they get noticed by a nuclear blast or someone and then Rise Above, you know, Lee is probably like, okay, you got my blessing, go off and do great yeah. things because they're going to do better for you than not. But I think what's cool about a small label like this is that because they don't release stuff constantly, right? it's a handful of times a year where there is a new Rise Above release, you're kind of like, oh, cool, I got to get that as opposed to, and again, not that there's anything wrong with them because I like this label too, but like a Frontiers Records or an mm -hmm. Inside Out or whatever, or a Nuclear Blast there were metal blade right there's new stuff coming out constantly constantly and half yeah. the time you can't even keep up with them but when rise above stuff comes out you're like oh we have this we have that new album coming out next month it's the first one in three months right from the label and you, you go and you, you check it out right so yeah so it's very yeah. so uh, like i mentioned we've each picked five bands and again this may be a mixture of bands who are still on the label and some that got their start on rise above and then moved on to something else uh to another label so uh we'll we'll kind of talk about that as we go i'll have karen start us off with the first band she's going to talk about today um well we're going to talk about a band who was uh got their start on rise above uh and moved over to rise above Le relics actually and that's orange goblin um Orange Goblin released their first five records on uh, Rise Above. And um, then Rise Above re-released re everything uh, later on in their career. Uh, I'm trying to, I have these uh, notes because I'm totally under unprepared, guys. Please and they're, and they're actually, they're on Candlelight now, like as a yes. very recent album, yeah. Right, right. So um, I like the, uh, oh my God, guys, I'm really bad with names of records. So uh -huh. I really got into uh, Orange Goblin on while they're on um, Rise Above. I think it was, uh, I don't know. They had a groovy Black Sabbath sound, my favorite type of Sabbath. This is what I really liked about uh, Orange Goblin on Rise Above. They had like, even some lyrics were thrown back into Sabbath. They had, my favorite right now, my favorite Sabbath album is um, Paranoid. And Orange Goblin covers Hand of Doom. <laughs> so it's just that, that groove, that the vocals, it's just everything I really love in metal. I really, really do. I love the clean vocals. I love the groove. I love the rhythm section. I just, it, it's, I love the riffs. Don't get me more wrong, but the, it, Orange Goblin is in, in particular on those records are more than just those riffs. And uh, like I said, they did their first five on Rise Above. And then later on, Rise Above released, re-released everything. And they're considered a relic act right now. So that is uh that's that's orange problem for me. And yeah, and I don't I don't know, like are they like what's their because they haven't released anything new in a while. Uh, I don't know a number of years, but I, and I know they've been on candlelight like for the the last couple. But yeah, you're right; they've re-released the early stuff. So the the rise above albums are frequencies from Planet Ten, which was ninety seven. Time Traveling Blues, 98. The big That's the black. one. <laughs> yeah, these are all really good. The Big Black in 2000. Mm -hmm. Gra in uh, 2002. And I think, was that the last one? No. Uh, Even I from got... the House of God was was also. Right. And then right. I think they moved to uh, 
Yeah, so Healing Through Fire is their sixth album. That was not released on Healing Through, uh, not released on Rise Road. That was um, Candlelight. Then they went to Candlelight for a couple albums. But yeah, and they got like a bunch of EPs and all sorts mm-hmm. of other things. And, you know, even Karen says on, on. one of the things yeah. I love what you said is the whole groove thing with them. Yeah. Because um, even though it's riffy and it's, you know, it's heavy, there's a, like a bottom end to these guys, which I think is really, really cool. And I, I remember like, and you were listening to them way before me. I didn't jump on board with these guys till uh, Eulogy for the Dam, which was 2012. So really, I've only been like into their music the last decade, but, and that's a really mm-hmm. terrific album too. But yeah, the early stuff is like. Yeah. And um, I, I hesitate on in particular time traveling blues, which is my favorite because of that. I hesitate, like there are times where I don't even think it's metal. I just think it's rock and roll and it's heavy rock and roll. And yeah, then they'll uh, some riffs will come in like super fuzzy and rattle your brain a little bit. But that's what I, I love that about them. And uh, I think the early stuff for me is more kind of stoner rock biker metal type of stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's anything wrong with that, <laughs> yeah, right? That's it's, the best way to put it. And yeah. these genre names and subgenres are driving me crazy. So I'm pretty much going to ditch them all. I'm not going to get all like official <laughs> so yeah orange goblin and then are we doing two two yeah why don't we do that that sounds good yeah my next one is with the dead which is lee dorian's band it's like a super group formed of uh one guy was from electric wizard former guitarist from electric wizard the original drummer was from bolt thrower um there was another guy uh, in a band I, I can't remember. It's so difficult to pronounce. Ram Ramses Ram Ramses or whatever. Ramses, look it up. <laughs> the damned or whatever. Yeah, and uh, now here's here's something I have um, a problem with as far as um, uh, uh, genres go. Okay, so is this funeral doom? sludge i don't know all i know is it is like tar pitch okay it is slow and black and heavy and it's slower than molasses it's just i don't know it's so primitive and it's not for everybody but is it slower have... than than uh cathedral's first album forest of equilibrium because if it's slower yes. than that, that's <laughs> in particular uh the first uh the second one um love with the dead the second album is even is is the slower one out of the two there's only two records one came out in 2015 the other came out in 2017 and uh, I don't think they've officially broken up. I just think it's they're kind of a super group. One lives in Jersey, actually, New Jersey. So it's like they get together when they can and release a record. Um, but it's super slow. It's really, really heavy. Some of the heaviest metal I've ever heard. I mean, wow. just slow. And Lee Dorian's vocals is very atypical for uh, this kind of music. He's not, I mean, he's singing, but... It's not exactly clean and it's not it's pretty flat which is kind of i find it charming and i like it i know it puts some people off but with the dead is super heavy and if you if you like that stuff if you like funeral if you like sludge check it out if yeah, you haven't I've never listened to that band of his and i probably should i like his vocals personally i, but I do very, too he's an acquired taste too. not everybody does you know exactly he's got, yeah, yeah. hmm all right, cool. We're off to a good start. So uh, my first choice for today is a band from Sweden who debuted uh, on the label in 2012 with an album called Step Inside. The band is called Troubled Horse. Oh, right. This is a surprise. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, uh, I like this band. They're they're a little different for the label in that they're not overly doomy. They're, uh, I don't know, they're more kind of like, I think like a faster paced uh like graveyard sort of so they got this album 2012 revolution on repeat came out in 2017 i mean really good vocals lots of energy most of the songs are pretty kind of like fast and bluesy hard rock garage rock type of thing you got like twin guitars you got a guy named martin hepic and tom john i'm probably screwing these names up but um (laughs) and uh, martin does the singing uh to me like i said they remind me of kind of like a faster paced graveyard with better vocals and i like graveyard 
<clears throat> and like a thin Lizzy thing going on with the twin guitars. Um, yeah. The riffs are not like big, brutal, heavy. They're more layered, less doomy, but uh, there's some really cool songs. I, I jotted down some songs I think people want to check out. Uh, Hurricane is a really good one. The Filthy Ones, One Step Closer to My Grave. I mean, the, the, the lyrical content is, is right in line with everything else. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, the Haunted is good uh, and Bleeding. Um, and, and these songs, like, they, they got, like, a roar to them. There's a lot of menace, but there's still this kind of, like, 60s garage rock, um, which I think you hear more of on the first album. Um, like, like, a lot of shimmering guitar chords, a little bit of organ here and there. But I, I think both albums are really good. I prefer the second album slightly because it's just a little heavier, and I think they just sound a little mature as a band. But uh, really cool yeah. band, Troubled Horse from Sweden. I mean, there's so much good stuff coming out of Sweden anyway, and they, oh, they sound Sweden killed it. It's, oh yeah, it's killing it now. For, and they definitely the sound Swedish. You know, like the, mm -hmm. the Swedish bands have a certain sound, even though I think they're kind of aping the American sound, right? But they definitely come across as sounding Swedish. Really, really good band. Uh, and my next one, I'm going to stick in the UK. No surprise that Lee found these guys. Um, the band is called Age of Taurus. They're from Yes. Lee. So th their first album is Desperate Souls of Tortured Times. And their second album is The Colony Slain. And this was from 2018. So 2013, 2018 on this one. Um, I, if you like Candlemass, Solitude Eternus, and Trouble, I think you'll feel right at home with these guys. Oh, absolutely. Um they have like an epicness, right? epicness is that a word? Epicness to their if, if extraness is a word, epicness is a epicness word. Epicness and lots of extraness, you know, long songs, big, super crunchy riffing, long arrangements. Uh, Tony Wright is the main guy in the band. I think originally this was supposed to be just like a one man studio project thing, but uh -huh. he filled it out with a full band. But he's uh, he sings, he plays guitar, he writes all the songs. Um, He's got an interesting voice because it's more of kind of like high pitched melodic style. And there's a lot of vocals on the album. So you got this high pitched kind of vocal, not high pitched like Eddie Lee or something like that, but it's definitely for like doom. It's a little on the high side. The high register. And, you know, his vocals are kind of soaring over these big, massive doom riffs. You got some of the songs are slow and ponderous and plodding in a good way. Lots of guitar solos. Um, some of the songs to look out for, guys, uh, Sinking City is really good, A Rush of Power, Embrace the Stone, In Dreams We Die, For Trees and Rewise. They're all kick-ass songs. There's really not a bad song in, on the two albums. Um, I think I prefer the first album just a little bit. Mm -hmm. A little heavier, has a little bit better riffs. Uh, well, I think while well, the second album, I think, has more of like kind of like a Thin Lizzy or like for those who are familiar with the band Ashbury from Arizona, kind of like that style going on still really good um i i would think his vocals might not appeal to everybody because again they're really different for doom and he's his style is a little light for the heaviness in the music but i think uh it's still a really cool band and i just love this kind of sound in doom anyway and, and look at those album covers i mean they're just absolutely terrific so uh yeah age of taurus and troubled hearts are my first two selections here back to you very nice um, well, my next selection, I should have really done this with one of my later ones, because I'm not that big a fan of the band, believe it or not. It's Witchcraft. Uh, I like Witchcraft. I wanted to talk about them because uh, the first time I heard them, um, uh, they sounded to me like the vocalist sounded like Rocky Erickson, and I really like Rocky Erickson, and that kind of grabbed my um attention uh i think their first two are on um on rise above uh, yeah. or self-titled and yeah. firewood now my boyfriend really likes witchcraft but i think they're interesting it's not that i dislike them i don't opt to put them on it's you know they're great when they're on but i thought it was very curious i just think it's something that goes to show you that the, the label is a lot more diverse than i think some people realize and which Craft, I think is a great example of it. They've got this theme. Now, this to me is the one occurring theme in the, the label is lyrics, themes of songs, is occult, uh, spooky, you know what I mean? Like it's nothing super, super cheery about. It. And witchcraft has all of that. And they're a little jammy, a little too jammy for me, but uh I really like that. I like their songwriting. I love the homage to Rocky Erickson. And uh I just think uh I don't know. I, I think it's 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 good to have like they're very rock and roll and they 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 do a lot of soloing and stuff like that. So 
Don't worry. Why do I like Nebula and and not them so much? I don't know. Don't ask. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't figure that out either. Yeah. So, so they're uh, they're first. Also, I'll just give you some quick information on their catalog. And for those who are interested, yes, please craft, do. I'm a big fan, and they, we did a ranking show on them a while back. Uh, I think Jamie Lasso and myself did it. Their first album, okay. Witchcraft, is on Rise Above 2004. Firewood is on Rise Above 2005, okay. and The Alchemist is on Rise Above, and that was 2007. Yes. Then they moved to Nuclear Blast for Legend and everything after that. So, uh, yeah. And originally, you're absolutely correct. They Originally, they just kind of got together to work on a tribute album to Rocky Erickson and Pentagram because they're big fans of both bands. And then they wow. decided to make it a full-time thing. It's like, hey, whatever, you know. But do you see that? His vocals, do you see, especially in the first one? A little bit, see, yeah. Like, he's got a little Jim and... Morrison to him also at times, I think. Um, uh -huh. He's a really good singer. Um yeah pretty talented yeah. dude although man i don't know what he was thinking on that i don't know if you heard their last album from 2020 it's called black metal it's a all him on acoustic guitar it's depressing and just awful it's like no band it's just like <laughs> yeah, it's terrible i really hope they come back with another band album because that yeah that awful but yeah uh, yeah but i i really like them a lot i think they're a good band but yeah they are they are very kind of 70s uh heavy rock so there is a lot of like jammy stuff and longish songs and things like that and you know i think they've gotten a little less heavy riffing in the last couple albums but i don't know yeah I think that's, really good. that's you see like oh okay so why uh a band like i like i really like graveyard is it that different i mean they do a lot of it's i i don't know it's interesting so, yeah because that they're yeah they're, to me, they're kind of similar but but not Right. Graveyard's really interesting because Graveyard, not to derail the conversation because they're not right, really right. Famous, but you know, Graveyard's first like album or two is very different from the last couple. They became like this kind of like blues rock, garage rock, psychedelic band. Um, that really their last couple albums has no doom on it whatsoever. But even I know. when they were I doing the doomy do. stuff, they're again it's a Swedish thing, Karen. There's kind of like there's this kind of like jangly guitar sound from a lot of these Swedish bands that I think yeah. is kind of cool because it's different. Right. Whereas I think the UK bands are more into the kind of traditional heavy, heavy riffs and whatnot. And Sweden, they kind of do their own thing. I don't know. It's, it's cool. I like it's it. Good. I like it. Good. <laughs> yeah. So um, thank you for helping me out on that. <laughs> no I, I, like I said, I've been a fan for a long time. So I, I, I love talking about witchcraft. I should have let you with that one. That's okay. It's all right. Okay. <laughs> all right. So uh, my next band, it's going to be a segue into my number one band and that is the oath i really like the oath they only had one album and uh i've, I've said this before and um i'm gonna say it again because i can't say it enough one of the things that it's just a, a great benefit it's not a, a real reason it's just one thing that i love about this kind of music is that it's very, I, I hate to use, I, I don't know, for lack of a better term, female friendly. That women are are represented pretty, I think, better than any other metal genre in uh, Doom and Psych. And um, it's it's awesome. And they're front and center playing guitar, singing, fronting bands, not, not just a bass player in the corner. You know what I mean? It's um, a keyboard it's player band. or something. Yeah. 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 Right on. So the oath is. Yeah, they only had one record. Uh, one of the founding members, I think, it's from Sweden. Yeah. Once from Germany, once from Sweden, and um, they killed it. And I was really sad that it was only one record, but it's it's. I love her vocals. I love the guitar sound. It's just basic metal hard rock to me, and there's nothing better than that, you know. And um, they broke up after one record, and they went on to form Lucifer, which is a band I will be talking about next. But yeah, I was. Uh, I went back and revisited that record and I was really happy to hear it. Um, I, you know, here I am unprepared. I can't even give you standout tracks or anything like that. I'm just going to say the oath. It's only one record. It's on Spotify. It's really easy listening. I love it. The vocals are haunting. Just great. <laughs> Got a cool, uh, and I haven't listened to it in a while, but I have it. I, yeah. Uh, and you know, as sad as it is, they only did the one record. I think. Right. Got Lucifer after that, and it's like you know, so you yes. can't complain all that much. This is kind of like a, a cool kind of like European early 80s metal thing going on like some Absolutely. of the arrangements got this kind of like merciful fate thing happening and just very very cool yeah it's really yeah. good 
really good band. Yeah, it's a shame they didn't do more, but that is what it is. I want to thank you again, Pete, for <laughs> helping me today. I'm just like frozen. I don't know what's wrong with me. Guys, forgive me. I'm, so I'm the color. I'm the color commentator, Karen. That, that's what I do, right? <laughs> I guess you're bailing me out today for sure. That's all right. All right. So my next uh, band, and I apologize. I can't. I was only able to find one of my CDs, but I have all of them. I just don't know. They're not on the shelf where they're supposed to be. I'm like, where the hell did I put them? Uh, this band is from the UK. Uh, the band is got a weird name. Admiral Sir Cloudsley Shovel. The name of the band is based on some famous military guy in UK what? history. I don't so know British. It. it totally is. I mean, could you imagine? Hi, we are Admiral Sir Cloudsley Shovel. I can't even say it correctly what? once. I have to, I've, oh, it's like, uh, there have been so many times I'm like, oh, it's Sir Admiral Cloudsley. No, it's not Sir Admiral. It's Admiral Sir Cloudsley Shovel. Like, yeah. Um, their debut uh, album which is not this one is don't fear it hear it from 2012 and i have that and they have a mascot on all their album covers which is this guy in this big kind of like red bird costume um and i wish i could find the debut because that was that showed like a, it was just all him uh uh this uh check him before you wreck him it was 2014 uh this one is keep it greasy from 2016 and then they have the more recent one, which is called Very Uncertain Times from 2019. I think they're working on something new. Uh, anyway, this is this band is, I think, a little bit different than all the bands we've talked about today, because this is total biker rock, psych, stoner. Yeah, it, it's like this is like if Motorhead did this type of music, that'd be these guys. Um, they're dirty, grimy, noisy they dig into a groove they make magic happen um it's this fuzz going on there's fast-paced stuff it's very rock and roll it's very garagey very kind of 60s early 70s uh devil's island off the first album is a really good fuzzy groove monster that i mean you listen to it and you're like oh did this come out in like 1971 uh the riffs and solos are very kind of tony iomi tony borge from uh budgie jim mm. mccartney from cactus that sort of mm. thing. Mm -hmm. uh other songs to check out i death uh scratching and sniffing is a good one captain mayweather may Mets, captain merryweather um happiness begins bulletproof hawkline monster 10 years later iceberg these are all really good uh, songs to check out some of my favorites from the catalog um first two albums are my favorites as i think though the first two which are uh don't fear it here and check them before you wreck them they're the most kind of stone or doom flavored the two more recent are really good too but they're just more of in the kind of like biker rock heavy psych style which if you like that yeah. better you might like those more um, and like I said, the bird guy mascot is on all the album covers. I think they're a really, really fun band. And but again, if you like the kind of the, the real rough and raw, they're, they're like the stoner version of Motorhead. That's what I always look at them as. The vocals are real gruff and, you know, just that description. That's great. That's a great way to say it. I that's mean, what, it's, it's they're, they're not right? very refined, right? They're just they're yeah. pretty much they're kind of like the garage biker rock act on this label and uh but they're really good at what they do so so i dig them with a name like yeah. sir cloudsley whatever yeah, it's definitely sir garage. <laughs> yeah exactly all right and uh my next band uh from the u.s uh they're from indiana the band is called the gates of slumber and uh the two albums um they're originally on i hate records but they're they've got um their third and fourth album are on i are on rise above which are the ones i'm going to talk about so hymns of blood right. and thunder which is an amazing album cover it's kind of that. like uh frank uh um frazetta frank frazetta looking a very little. and then the other album is the wretch from 2011 so it's been and i it's been a while since these guys put anything out so um they've had some deaths in the band so this is a band that has just had, gets no luck whatsoever mm -hmm. uh and the leader of the band is carl simon so he basically broke up the band um, after their fourth album, and they've been inactive uh, since they released uh, the Stone Storm Crow EP in 2013. So it's been a decade. So uh, my guess is these uh -huh. guys are kind of done. But anyway, but the music is a mix of kind of like, kind of like Heaven and Hell era Black Sabbath. Like it's it's not the slow heavy uh, stuff from the 70s. It's more of kind of like 80s Black Sabbath. So it's a little mm -hmm. heavier. Candlemass is another reference. Um, along with some like kind of just classic metal sounds. Um, I like the album covers. I think pretty cool. 
Uh, some songs to check out Beneath the Eyes of Mars is a really cool track. Uh, the Doom of Al Al Akeldama, something like that. That's really good. The Scourge of Drunkenness, really funny, funny title there. Uh, and Castle of the Devil is some of my favorites. Um, they're this the last album here, The Wretch, is probably their doomiest one. Uh -huh. And I like the production of this one the best, although this one's good too, but I think this is my favorite out of them. But uh, And I, I haven't heard their earlier ones, so I really can't say much about those. But yeah, but pretty cool band. And uh, like I said, the, it's been so long, I, I they might be done. I don't know. But The Wretch is really good. I would urge people to check that out. Well, that so, so cool. Nice. All right, let's hear about Lucifer because I could talk Lucifer all day, man. I love Lucifer. What is oh, that? Yeah. So happy you chose. I do too. I ah, do too. So good. They are. And this first album is really cool and um they got a little help from cathedral guitarist and you can definitely hear that i'm thinking on um, what song uh, sabbath in particular it sounds like to me oh there goes my light <laughs> okay it's been a great day people <laughs> uh oh my god anyway so let's let's do this Okay, so anytime um, you get Gaz Jennings to help you out on an album, that's a good thing. Well, I think he had a hand in forming this band, right? I mean, I think like he he and uh, um, Johanna Sadanis, the singer yes. from the Oath, uh, I think they formed this band together. But then Gaz dropped dropped out of it after a couple of like two albums. I this think. I didn't know, but I did know he helped them a lot, um, yeah. and you can definitely hear that, and it's uh, it's great. And um, she relocated to Sweden, I believe, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sweet and once again uh, my favorite track. <clears throat> well because i think favorite. i think and again they've changed members a million times but i think she's either married to nikki anderson now or they're in a they're in a relationship and he's from entombed and a whole uh -huh. other bands but he plays drums for them but yeah i because the rest of the band is all swedish and she's german but right. they change i mean if you look at the list of past members it's like they've only been around a handful of years and they've got just as many people who've come and gone from the band but yeah well, how many records do they have out they only put one out on rise above right only one on rise above but they've got uh five, four right? with i think they're oh, number five so yeah yeah they're on century yeah. media now but the first one so good first one is great and i really really love the album cover too i mean it's basic the colors are great uh it's, um it's just i don't know it there's not much to it it's very very basic but it's their logo on like a light sea foam green with gold on there it's just yeah. awesome you guys please hold on there we go you got the george lemay like, thing going on there every time george's lights are always kind of flickering it seems yes <laughs> i don't know what's happening it's just such a weird day already um my favorite is morning star sabbath and abracadabra the title track um just uh just great great uh record all together and uh i really do like this band i'm it's a great debut. I, I kind of often wonder why they left Rise Above. I'm wondering, I don't know if there was a little. Well, I mean, they went to Century feeling. Media. Yeah, because it doesn't it doesn't make sense, Karen, because, you know, obviously Lee and Gaz were, were buddies and can. And, uh, right. People. So could it just be that Century Media swooped in and gave them lots of money? And I that, that that's the only thing I could think of. Um, I, yeah, I mean, how much better is Century? I don't know. We're not in that business, so. Well, I, I mean, so. they do a lot of more. I mean, yeah. I mean, when you really think about it, you you, pro it, you it's probably Century Media is going to get you more promotion, might get you on some tours, and let's. I'm looking at it right now. Let's be honest. So the first album didn't chart anywhere. All the other albums have charted in a lot of different countries. So, so you know, okay. so Century Media does things well. They're a big label. So yeah, um, yeah. I get it. Uh, I'm, I'm sure Lee was probably upset to lose them because this this band could have been the flagship band on Rise Above. I think so. Um, I, I definitely think so. And what's so good about Lucifer, it's they're fuzzy, but they're melodic. They kind of remind me at times of... Um, Blue Oyster Cult, and I don't know. It's just uh, there's there's more to them than just a riff. I think that's I I I and her voice is so amazing, and it, it's it's great. I I I love them a lot, and uh, yeah, and, and you know we're talking about that and why they would go to what keeps a band like Uncle Acid there. Yeah, I don't know. 
<laughs> what would keep a band like Uncle Acid there? I mean, they're huge. I, I think they're bigger than Lucifer, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And now... Uncle um, Acid gets on the cool tours from time I to know. time. And, yeah, yeah. Desert, I, well, I, I, you know what the problem is? I've said this a million times, and I know some people are like, oh, I can't believe you think that anybody cares. But the name Lucifer is a complete stopping point for many people, right? It's like, I will I not agree. listen to that band because I just can't deal with a band having that name. It's yeah. the facts. I know people, you know, people are going to comment on this video saying, well, I don't know. I, I don't mind the name. It's like, but how much you want to bet? We'll see people like, yeah, I don't listen to Lucifer because I'm not going to. It's just like Satan, right? There are people who will even there. They may be metal fans, but they won't listen to Satan because of the name. That's or Satan satyrs or anything like yeah. that. You know, I get but, it. I mean, the music of Lucifer, I, the first album, which we're really talking about here, it's the only Rise Above album. That's their doomiest album. Yeah. But still, like you said, there's this kind of like late 60s psych pop yeah. thing going on underneath there oh. i mean her vocals are amazing there's right. nothing like about the music of lucifer that would be a turnoff i don't think and especially their more recent albums are just terrific they're not doom albums at all no but they're just so cool i mean they're like such great retro albums that uh -huh. like that's so why I tell every, every time I talk to someone and they're like, oh, Lucifer, I don't know the name. I'm like, man, just listen to the albums. Come on. It's I know. Music. It's like, you know, if you love, we can name a ton of 60s and early 70s bands. It's like, you know, if you love like Jefferson Airplane, if you love like Janis Joplin, if you love like Grand Funk Railroad, if you love the Stones, I mean, you know, it's all these bands. Man, that's kind of what this music is like. It's a little heavier than that, obviously, but not much. No, I, I, uh, yeah. And I, and you, I love that, uh, guitar, the cathedrals guitarist. It just adds that extra heaviness and I like it. I, it's their first album is my favorite because of that, but right. there's no show. I love this seventies revival. I love the fact that you can hear like blue oyster cult and Led Zeppelin and all these other prominently, prominently, they're not trying to hide. I mean, here we are in 2023. How many chords are on a guitar? How You know what I'm saying? Like, how much? I don't know. I love it. I love it. It's awesome. So I'd rather we had guitar based music, even if it is heavily influenced by another era, than have music with no guitars. Right. Because we exactly. kind of had that for a little like popular music. Well, I mean, we don't normally talk about really popular music on here, but, you know, like in this parts of the 90s and whatnot, we had all this music that just like, you know, nobody cared about guitars and guitar solos anymore. It's like, let's just sample this and use keyboards. And yeah, it's just like, oh, so I don't personally, I don't care when we have these young bands that come up and they're paying homage to the bands we, we grew up with. I don't have an issue with that at, at all. No, not at all. As long I as they make that. original songs, it's OK to kind of have little elements of other bands. So and and Lucifer definitely does, but, it, but it's done in such a good way. And she is such a good singer and she has she the is. look i mean she's yeah how would you de describe her voice because it's i mean she's singing but she's not really straining do you know what i mean like she's not she's not belting anything out no, <laughs> but she's I, got a I, relaxed I, way about her it's she's hard to describe and i don't think she really sounds like anybody else mm -mm. she's angelic at times she's a little more forceful at others but there's a playfulness right in her vocal style that I find very, very appealing. Yeah. Yeah. She looks uh, with that pale skin and very pale. Hair. It's, it's, yeah. it's just a look. It's a great, great image. Um, while we're talking about uh, bands, you might not think like we're in a, a certain genre. They like throwing back with their influences, stuff like that. I, I want to say, and we're rise above. It's just put out church of misery's new record born under a mad sign and a lot of things that you said just now kind of triggered that for me and i you want to mention it or do we <laughs> Go ahead. um it's it's great it's a great record it's uh the album doesn't um lean heavily on samples that was another thing that made me think when you had mentioned it like there's not a lot of samples usually in their uh all their records has samples like news clips of serial killers and you know what the songs are about in particular not so much now but they're still there and i like that even more it, I, it's been seven years since they released their record and this one on rise above their first one on rise above is uh great it's it's not like oh 
they tried good effort it's not bad it's a great record it's a great record and i'm looking forward to them touring in uh, the states sometime soon i like yeah. it quite a bit and uh i mean i think all their albums are really really good watch pete's review it's a great one yes <laughs> right. i just just did it not long ago so yeah it's, he did a good job yeah, yeah well we'll be talking more about church of misery in the not too distant future because uh we are going to rank the catalog of them in, in the coming weeks so you'll probably get it uh, maybe late august or something like that but still yeah. gotta still gotta fully digest the new one but yeah a lot a lot of really good ones. Yeah. yeah it's uh another staple band of rise above in more recent years so uh, yeah good stuff and that was kind of hard for me in a lot of ways like uh I was brushing up on my, you know, the old, like old Orange Goblin and all the stuff like that, but I couldn't stop playing Born Under a Mad Sign. I just couldn't stop. Like that was my go-to. And I was, I, you know, I, when I did, I revisited Lucifer, The Oath, all those records I liked a lot. I just could not get that one off of my, uh, out of my headphones. Isn't it good to have a new one that's really kind of hitting it for you i mean that's yeah it's been a while i gotta say it's been a while a lot of bands have let me down lately but that's me it's on me but it this would uh, it's so good to have this one um makes me feel real great I, to me it's an excellent example born under a mad sign is an excellent example of the genre that personifies doom metal for me it's it's everything it, it, that's a doom metal band that Church of Misery and that record is like a perfect doom album. Not too slow. Vocals are gruff, but not too gruff. There's a Sabbath worship, but it's not overtly. I can't, I can't. It's just perfect. It's a perfect fucking record. Oh, excuse me. Doom metal record in my mind. So. And they yeah. have their formula, right? I mean, for those of you who don't know, and again, we'll talk about this way more in depth when we talk when we rank their catalog, but they basically mm -hmm. write songs about serial killers. So every song and every album is about a specific serial killer in the history of the world. And yeah. as you know there are tons of them, right? So every song is like a little mini story about that particular, you know, criminal yeah. killer and whatnot. So for some people that might not be pleasant music to listen to and it's not, but you know, whatever. You don't have to listen it's to them. Anymore. That's what they do, right? That's there's you know, they don't sing about Dungeons and Dragons, they sing about serial yeah. killers. So no yeah. Lord of the Rings here. <laughs> no, no, it's just true life stuff. I mean, you know, it's part of history, yeah. right? As bad as it is. So and right. I, is it any worse than writing lyrics about like World War Two and all the atrocities? And then it's kind of the same thing, right? It's like you really can't I agree. it's real life stuff. So right know, glamorizing it they're just kind of like this is this is what we choose to do so it's their thing <laughs> all right uh my last band that i'm going to talk about i think is my favorite out of all the bands that i have brought to the table today and i don't and i've only just started getting into this band in for a couple of months and i think they're absolutely absolutely terrific and that is witch skull oh yeah i forgot yes uh they're so good. They're from Canberra, Australia. They're a power trio, doom, traditional metal. There's a little bit of new wave of British heavy metal in their music, but man, they they're are so awesome. good. Um, their first album was not on Rise Above Records, and that was The Vast Electric Dark from 2015. But then they released uh, this one, Coven's Will on Rise Above in 2018. Yes. Then they released uh, a Driftwood Cross in 2020, and then they just came out with one of my another of my favorite. I mean, to to get like the new Church of Misery and the new Witch Skull in like the same week uh, is it, I've been listening to these so much. The Serpent Tide is their brand new album from 2023. It's absolutely, absolutely terrific. I have to get that. so yeah. Oh, Karen, you got to get it. It's so good. I mean, this stuck in the so Church good. of Misery. <laughs> I literally, you know, over the last bunch of weeks, this and Church of Misery, I've been listening to like an almost constant rotation. They're both so good. Yeah. Um, so these guys, tremendous riffing, explosive guitar solos. You know, they're a power trio and you would think, God, can three guys make so much like this big wall of noise? And they do. Uh, and then the guitar player, whose name is Marcus De Pasquale, he has a really unique vocal style. And again, he's, he's got this kind of warbly thing going and don't get turned off people because to my ears, he sounds like if Eddie Vedder from Pearl Jam went complete metal, that would be him. 
that's an excellent way to describe it. That's what right. he sounds like to me. But and, and yeah. I'm not, you know, like I'm not a Pearl Jam fan by any means. Uh mm -hmm. I liked his vocals a lot on the first album, uh, on the 10 album quite a bit. And the second album was okay, and then I lost interest. But I thought that he sounded great on that album because that, that was more of a metal album to me. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So this guy, Marcus, has a similar type of a, of a style and sound, but definitely, obviously, he's singing total metal stuff here. And I think it works really, really well. Um, every album of these is great. I haven't heard their very, very first one, but the three on Rise Above are terrific. I think each one is better than the one that came before it. I think yeah. the newest one is my favorite. Um, some tracks to check out, folks. Uh, Obsidian Eyes, Sun Carver, Bornless Hollow, Misery's Horse, Rune of Thorn. Uh, those are just some of my favorites on the most recent album. But wow. you can't go wrong with any of their albums. You will hear some of the best riffing in Doom today uh, with on these albums, and the production is massive. I mean, these right. albums sound just huge. I mean, it's just a guy. He's got like his flying V guitar, the bass and drums, and it's just it's very well produced, very very huge. Whereas I think like you know, Karen was talking about the New Church of Misery, which is obviously they're more of a kind of like a grimier, you know, dirtier doom. For, yeah, and this is like a little more polished, but they're both so good for what they do. I would I would highly recommend if you're going to start off. I mean, we talked about a lot of good bands and albums here today on this episode, but if you're going to start off with two albums to check out right off the bat, I would urge you to check out the new Church of Misery, Born Under a Bad Sign, or Mad Sign, mm -hmm. and uh, this brand new one from Witch Skull, which is uh, The Serpent Tide. They're both amazing. Brand new. So, I uh, It's just a testament to Rise Above um, that they release records like that. I mean, it, it's a pretty varied label. I mean, you have Twin Temple, one their their one of their albums is uh satanic doo-wop and that's exactly what it is it's a there are two people I um, can't get it so i i know that you, you you can't it's it's not for everybody but it's, it's very different. different yeah it's really it's different. not it's not all, all like rise above is about the quality and not the quantity and they pick bands that they can get behind whether it's for us or not i just appreciate them being out there in the in the atmosphere you know just doing something weird like that and and having a label that will support them you know what i mean yeah. so uh, to me that's one of my favorite things about rise above is that they would have witch skull and church of misery and with the dead and twin temple you know what I'm saying? And it's it's pretty awesome. And Blood Ceremony. I, you know, I was just going to say, and Blood Ceremony, I didn't want to steal too much thunder because Jamie Laszlo and I are ranking their catalog tomorrow. But okay. Blood Ceremony is <laughs> terrific. And they're still on the label, right? And they're doing yeah. pretty well. Uh -huh. that, that's, I, you know, Karen, I would argue that Blood Ceremony is one, another one of their flagship bands. They're, they're definitely top three, I would think. Yeah, uh, I think really so. good. Mm -hmm. I mean, who else? I so say you got Uncle Asses, we mentioned, uh, Horizont from, from Sweden, another really, really good band. Yes um you know death penalty astra they're they're no longer well i don't know if they're together anymore because they're, they're astra which is this really cool san francisco kind of psychedelic prog band they were on rise yeah. above and they kind of broke up and then now that they formed this other new band called birth but now i've heard rumblings that astra might come back and do something i don't know so there's some still some really good bands on the label and a lot of bands that used to be on the label that have moved on to other things um ghost ghost Sun. Or Son O, however, I mean. Grand they, Magus or Magus, however they say their name. Incredible Hog. Um, just looking up some other names here. Pentagram, you know, I mean. Yeah. Uh -huh. pers person, person, P-U-R-S-O-N, another cool female fronted kind of like psychedelic mm -hmm. band. Um, there's, a, there's a ton of them. You, you can right. go online, you can look up the whole roster, but really, really cool stuff. So um, so there, you've got, you've got 10 bands. Well, we kind of gave you 11 today because we talked a bit of Church of Misery. But uh, I would urge anybody to go check out any of these bands that we talked about here today. But go over to their website or go onto Wikipedia. You can see the full list of bands and uh, give this label some love. There's a lot of really good, good records and album, uh, records and bands to be discovered. And I'm sure we'll see more. And, and we'll probably circle back on another episode. We'll circle back to Rise Above Relics and we'll talk about some of the really cool like underground shit from the vaults that like you're never going to hear about anywhere else unless you you know kind yeah. of investigate a little further so really cool stuff uh, from the 60s and 70s that they have unearthed and it's just like you know a lot of cool stuff 
So, and of course, down in the comments, uh, let us know what some of your favorite bands are from Rise Above, if you're familiar with them. If you're not, if you go investigate any of the bands we talked about today, let us know what you think of what you heard down there. And uh, we'll see you next month here on another episode of It's All About the Fuzz. Visit us on the web at www.cetranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on YouTube, all together, all the damn time. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And click on that notification bell so you get alert of all of our content as a post and please do hit the like button before you leave and stay tuned tomorrow like i said it's almost like we're doing rise above part two jamie laszlo and i will be ranking the catalog of blood ceremony uh, i'll be watching be better be better i uh, you know i will I want stay to tuned for that 10 a.m eastern standard time tomorrow morning sunday what is tomorrow the 23rd right 23rd yeah 23rd so until then, for Karen LaPrezios, I am P. Pardo. We'll see you next month here. And it's all about the fuzz. Stay fuzzy, everybody. Have a good weekend. Bye.